Dan Golden is a chief search artist at BFO, headquartered in Lakeview. He's a unique personality. He's extremely smart, he's full of ideas, and he's recognizable. He famously wears orange everywhere he goes. BFO was on the Inc. 5000 list for six consecutive years. They have locations here in Chicago, London, and Singapore. I met Dan for a beer at Burning Bush Brewery in North Center to talk about agency life, the future of search, and how he rebounded from fan rock bottom with $21.49 in Facebook ads. Well, Dan, thanks for doing this. I, I teased it in my intro. You spent $21.49 on Facebook ads. What were the KPIs for this campaign and how was the ROI? Uh, money well spent. Uh, the KPIs were friends. I wanted friends that I could watch a Seahawks game with and being kind of a, an outpost here in Chicago, this was before they were necessarily very good at football. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted a place to go watch a game, some place where we could get game audio and where I could actually high five someone, not ironically or not out of pity. So uh, I was at a Bears game, Bears Seahawks, and there were a ton of us around and a lot of people from Chicago. I met a ton of new folks and I never had a place to go to a game and, and where it was just easy, where you weren't having to kind of beg to get on the screen. There was like a screen on a floor in one of there, these pictures. There, on there was, there yeah. was. It's the, it's the volleyball bar, okay. a great place uh, down, in, um, down in Lincoln Park. And yes, the only place I could get a game to show was on the screen in the floor, like an old, like, and, and so that was like, that was kind of rock bottom. And I'm like, something needs to change. Someone needs to step, I've been waiting for someone else to do this, right? So the 21 bucks. you're a bucks, digital marketer. I'm so a digital gotta, marketer. Use my powers well. for, for good, right? So 21 bucks in ads, that wasn't like a specific budget, but uh, back then, in, in this was about 2010, 2011, it's not that easy today. Back then, you turn on Facebook ads, you target it a little, it was, the media was way undervalued. Uh, and so we had 400 people following this Facebook group that I set up. And the Facebook group was for a bar that didn't exist yet. So everybody was very excited. And we walked around Wrigleyville, showed the group to a bunch of bar owners. And uh, there were a bunch of them that were, of course, they wanted the business, right? Yeah, why not? Um, so one, Newport's Bar and Grill was so excited, he offered to give us, uh, to bring in beer from Seattle, to do halftime raffles and to give us audio in the bar, even if the Bears were playing at the same time, which is a difficult, wow. which was a difficult thing to get here in Chicago. Uh, and it did, and it, uh, it lines out the door every game. It's um, awesome. There's it's, the videos, you've got that fan nirvana of high fives and beers it's and everything. Great. You know, it's great. There's, <laughs> I have met lifelong friends from showing up in that bar, and everybody has a conversation of what town did you grow up in. Like, you know, there's... Uh, whether you're into sports or not, the solidarity that you get with random people to rally around one thing that we all care about, as arbitrary as it may be to some, it was fun. So the ROI, you know, I've gotten enough free beers that it's probably <laughs> paying for itself. So, you know, that's uh, a... <laughs> I'm sure it has. Uh, you know, you have a reputation as being kind of this, a visionary, a forward thinker. You make predictions. Uh, you talk about things on the horizon like voice search. Um, you famously predicted that this is the year of mobile as so was last year and the year before that and the year before that, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, just a really open-ended question. What's piqued your interest recently in search? Yeah, so, you know, it, I, it's all the stuff other than everything we've always done as search marketers, which is words on a page. Um, that has been what we have built my business around, what are, many brands think of search as how many clicks is Google driving to my website? And That's right, yeah. That still exists, that's still important, traffic is important, um, but when you look at some of the changes in user behavior, expectations, um, traffic is becoming less important, right? So uh, Google's mission used to be very clear, which is to get you off of Google as fast as possible, right? right? Let, help you find your content, help get you to your web page, you know, the, and, and Google has fundamentally changed. Google's a destination, a portal, uh, and Google's trying to provide customer experience information directly in the search results where you don't need to click on a website, right? Yeah. So uh, from an SEO standpoint, uh, rich results, featured snippets, knowledge graph, all the different formats uh, that your content is now being displayed in the search results is almost as equally, equally as important as how many clicks showed up on your website from, so from Google, um, yeah. which makes my job hard because oftentimes we get judged by the brands we work with as how, how is our traffic this year versus last year and are we growing traffic? Uh, and it's a tougher value proposition for, for brands, especially as uh, publishers. There's a lot of risk to that. Uh, you know, 
one example I always give is uh, celebritynetworth.com. Yes. <laughs> uh, so this this website they had it was they had millions and millions of monthly right. visitors. They had forty full time employees that actually did research and validated this information. Uh, so they you know I don't really give a shit about how much someone's worth, but like people care about that, and there's yeah. a lot of volume there. Um, Google figured out that they could identify how much someone is worth on the site and. Voila, with featured snippets, all of the data on from that site is now living on Google.com. You never so, have to go to the site. Right, so they yeah. lost all their traffic and fired everybody. Yeah. Um, so it's a reminder to a lot of us that, that kind of build businesses off of certain right. tactics or certain platforms that Google or Facebook or any of these platforms, they don't owe you anything and a shift in, in their business model could squash yours. Yep. Um, so feel like I've rambled for a while, but you know, back to what I'm excited about with search, it's everything, everything next. So um, augmented reality uh, is, oh yeah, is search, about. right? Yeah. Like Google, um, Google Lens. And for those of you that are like, I don't have Google Lens. Yes, you do. It's probably on your phone. Uh, but the, the visual representation of, you know, being able to point at that and say, that's a table and that's a camera. Um, and the AI isn't quite there yet, but the AI should be able to tell us the make and model of that camera and, mm -hmm. and find the digital representation of that physical thing, people are going to be searching in a lot of different ways. And yes. it's not just typing in words. You know, I, I think I, I talk a lot about voice search and I find a lot of that exciting. In many ways, voice search isn't really different than text input search no. uh, when you want a web page as a result. Um, so search is going to be, so video indexing. And again, machine learning and AI uh, is is amazingly progressed in a lot of uh, in a lot of ways. Um, video and, and image recognition is still pretty early. Like Google Lens, as much as I just told you, it's really cool. It still sucks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. This is March of 2020. So uh, maybe if you're listening to this podcast in 2021, my this is going to be outdated because it's it's moving that fast, right? But imagine yeah. standing across the street. This is today technology. Uh, you you see a restaurant and you want to know the hours, the menu, the reviews, that kind of stuff, you point Google Lens at it, it will identify that location in the restaurant, and you don't have to input, you don't have to input anything. That's fascinating. Right? Yeah. So um, search is, is becoming less of this like acquisition channel of how much traffic can right. you drive, but it's also a customer experience channel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, people have become, um, they, they will, you know, Google something instead of go to your brand website, right? So sort of this... Totally. Um, leveraging search as a customer experience and, and as you think about automation and so different things you can do with uh, Amazon, you know, Amazon Alexa skills and Google Assistant skills and uh, Siri shortcuts, um, all the things that uh, people want action, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're able to, to fulfill what someone's looking for or getting an order update or making a reservation, like all of these, I think search is going to be less about clicks and more about specific actions. Uh, and we're already seeing that in the search today, that, yeah. right? So you've got um, reserve with Google. So you can yep. make a restaurant reservation with Google. Yep. Uh, if the restaurant, uh, like most, about 60% of the reservation businesses in the States uh, don't have any sort of online interaction, right? Yeah. So Google built uh, Duplex, which is a, uh, a an AI robot that will call a restaurant, ask about availability, and make the reservation for you. Amazing. Um, so Google and Google Assistant... Um, that, that is where I think things are heading. They want to facilitate actions and not just, you know, discovery within, within search. That's fantastic. I want to ask you a question about you're a veteran agency owner. The agency, uh, the agency life, do you see this changing fundamentally in the next five, 10 years? Uh, you kind of reflect yeah. on, on <laughs> kind of reflect on a decade plus as an agency owner. Yeah, I, I think you know the, the the saying goes for every industry. What got you here isn't going to get you there. Um, yeah. And I think some of these like fundamental shifts are already happening. Like this isn't about the next five to ten years. This is like today. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think one thing a lot of a lot of what agencies have been hired for over the years is to do things, to upload a bunch of keywords, to change a bunch of ads, to. Right set up bid portfolios. And um, I'm not of the belief that machines are going to take over everything. Uh, but it's going to they're going to take over a lot of the menial tasks that agencies have been hired to execute that in-house sure. teams typically haven't had the bandwidth for. And so, you know, I tell our team, especially the, the bid strategists and analysts that are traditionally done a lot of that, that work, I'm, I'm very clear, like your job's not going away just because Google's machine learning is better. 
um, it's going to change. And so, yeah. you know, our job isn't to do the work that machines could do. Like a few years back, I, I had a, a little bit of a different approach, uh, which was like, put my nerds with spreadsheets against your algorithm and we'll kick your ass. Yeah. And that was true. It's not anymore. Like machine, like machines can do things uh, yeah. that humans can't, right? And we have to embrace that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think agencies, um, as, as the media landscape is fragmented, uh, I think a lot of the, what brands are going to be coming to agencies for is to figure out stuff that they haven't been able to figure out. Uh, I think there's always going to be a role for agencies or s consultants, service providers, uh, just, just in terms of strategy, right? And it, it's yeah, not about sure. like in-house teams not being strategic or smart enough, um, but it's about what they have exposure to every day. And there's, mm -hmm. you know, what I, what I love working on, uh, you know, the reason I love staying agency side is like, you get a new challenge, not every day or every week, but like every hour as you jump from one <laughs> client right. opportunity to another. And, you know, the, the things that I learned from our B2C clients inform what we do for B2B clients. And, mm. um, you know, that, that, uh, that type of uh, experience and, and even just platform depth and expertise, like we, the buying power that we have with Google is bigger than one individual brand will have. Sure. Um, so, you know, I think agencies need to embrace sort of those, those value propositions and, it, it makes it difficult because most of our business models are, are built on like getting you to spend money and taking a cut of it. Yeah. And, you know, with, with in-house teams growing and there's, there's a lot more talent, you know, 10 years ago when, when I started this thing, you were shortly after, like right. there, like brands couldn't hire or find people that knew how to do this stuff. That's right. And there, there's a lot more of us out there. Um, so that's, that's the other thing. I think um, there's a ton of risk for like full service agencies that build their model on like big multi-year retainers where oh, everything yeah. is outsourced to the agency. Um, that's, that's tough. A lot of, you know, holding companies are trying very hard to shift away from that. Okay. Um, and so, you know, I think agencies that have more flexible models that can work with in-house teams that can um, provide and, and sell their strategic services versus relying on sort of the, the agency model of like outsource everything to us. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's a bit scary because that's right. um, those are typically bigger contracts, and that's what agent, what agencies want. But you know, you have to you have to break a few things, and you have to like think about the other side of the table of like what do brands really need, right. and can you swim with the tide, or are you going to keep swimming upstream trying to do business the way you always have? These are great points. Yeah, I I notice you guys are doing something that we're not which is we're very active on, on Twitter. We do, we post our, we our we're, we're cheers. Out of, we're out of here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is going to make cutting between cuts a little harder. I know. I try and keep up. To... I try and like watch your glass and I keep up. It's basically <laughs> my, my modus operandi here. You guys are doing something and you in particular are doing something that we're not, I guess I'm not doing as much, which is going really strong into LinkedIn. I notice it's kind of a thought leader. You're, you're commenting on everything, you're very active there, less so even on, than on Twitter. Um, why are you guys so interested in LinkedIn? The targeting, you know, yeah. as a, you know, as a B two B marketer uh, trying to extract value, and and you know, I, I'm I'm looking through the lens of like stuff that we do for BFO, but it's the same challenges that our B two B clients have, uh, which is getting the message out to the right people. And you know, Twitter, I find a lot of value in Twitter around conferences and events and certain you know, specific topics, but, um, you know, it's a fire hose. LinkedIn is yeah. a lot more, you know, a lot more targeted. Um, and we've seen a lot of value from it, e even the, you know, the visibility side of things. Um, LinkedIn is ha as an ad platform has a lot of challenges for marketers because right. the traffic's expensive yeah. and it should be expensive because it's more targeted. Um, and, and I think a lot of brands have sort of this myopic focus that like LinkedIn is just like Facebook at like it's it, they're all ad platforms mm -hmm. and LinkedIn is one of the few platforms that still has pretty significant organic reach uh, okay. when you're when you're targeting things the right way um, like TikTok would be the other one right now where there's a sure. ton of like free organic reach um, and that's not going to last forever right it's a t kind of a time and place thing like every social platform out there like initially there's a lot of organic reach there's a lot of low-hanging fruit a and then it gets closes, saturated yeah. as everybody is producing so much content and, you know, the battle for the feed becomes a paid battle. Um, but right now there's a ton of opportunities on LinkedIn. And I, I think the um, one of the approaches we're taking is that uh, it's about humans, which is why you see my face a lot, uh, right. more so than it is about brands. Like the, the, quite, the very simple stat is 2x. Uh, if, you, if a brand page with the same amount of followers posts 
a blog and an individual human with the same amount of followers posts a blog, same content, like the individual is going to get twice the reach. Yeah. Yeah. And so all these platforms are a little biased against, against brands because they want the money. Um, but when you think about it as, a, as an organization, like do you want to be putting out content as just a brand page? If you can leverage all of the relationships, like uh, the agency business is a relationship business. Yes. You know, we still, we prospect, we close deals from people that find our website and fill out a form, but um, a lot of it still comes from word of mouth and, and recommendations and just staying top of mind with a small audience. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of been our approach is like, find a small audience. You're probably seeing more of me because you're in a custom audience list because we email. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> um, so there's a ton of like fun <laughs> hacks that you can do to kind of connect things. And um, typically it's like, it's, it's very intentional. Um, I actually got an email this morning saying, I'm pretty sure we got goldened um, because I was <laughs> I explaining to him yesterday, yeah. like all of the LinkedIn automation and custom audiences and hacks and other stuff that we've been having some fun with. Uh, and he talked that. to his co-founder about it. And he's like, yeah, I've been seeing his stuff all. And, and he's like, you know what? That's probably intentional. And that's probably why we met uh, for I, drinks yesterday. I believe that. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, one of your comments on LinkedIn that I really liked was that you cheer on your competitors. Why? There's a lot of fish in the sea, you know, and, and probably a third to a half of our business is, is partnering with other agencies in, in one way or another. That's or how we did it. Yeah, yeah, that's how we got started. I, I mean, there's, listen, not every, not every brand is a, when you, early on, you'll take anybody with a checkbook and, right. right? And, and so as you learn and focus more about what you're great at and stop doing stuff, like we've stopped doing a lot of things. I know you have as well. And that's right. really scary as an, you know, as, a, <laughs> sure as, a, as an agency, like, a lot of agencies grow horizontally because you land a brand and they're like, can you also shine shoes? And I'm like, yeah, you pay our hourly rate, I'll shine your shoes, sure. Um, and you tend to grow really wide. And um, we've been honing in back on, on, on that because I, you know, you don't want to do stuff that you suck at. Yeah, and right. so I, I've had a lot of success from, from talking to other agencies and even, even ones that are like straight up competitors. Um, it's good to keep your competitors close, uh, but also like the solidarity, right? Um, we can all brag, we can all try and steal business from each other. And I'm sure some of that happens even right. with, with friendly interactions, but like agency business is a hard business. Let's yeah. drink to that. Yeah, let's actually. drink to that. Yeah, sure. Really. I completely agree. Um, so <laughs> I have, uh, and we've done one of these, but I, I call them agency owner therapy sessions. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of competitors and I, I got a quarterly or monthly call with them and we hop on the line and just talk shit about what that. is like, yeah. what is going on in our worlds and. Um, I've, I've gotten some epiphanies from that and I've gotten some like warm, right. fuzzy, we're not the only ones encountering right. this challenge, um, that, you know, that helps keep you going. Right. right. It's not for the faint of heart. Um, so you've been, like I said, you've been an owner for a while now. Do you still get into accounts? Do you still do, <laughs> you know, sort of, do I get nerdy? You get nerdy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what do you do? What do you get into? You like to get into the spreadsheets and I, I, I still do. I've, I've kind of forced my way back into it. Um, yeah. to be, you know, to be honest, there were a few years where we got into growth mode and, um, I'm, you know, I'm running a company. I'm not running search marketing campaigns. Right. Uh, and I got a little rusty and I didn't like that. Right. I, I you know, oftentimes that. you're put in the position on the front lines of explaining nuanced things. And I was like, I, just explained all this and I don't really, I'm a good talker, but I don't know if any of that was actually true and current. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I forced my way back into it uh, on, with, with certain accounts and, and as, a, as an owner, you kind of need to pick and choose where you're gonna add the most value. Right. And um, in some cases it's, uh, it can be det detrimental to the team when you sort of like swoop in without context. They don't um, like that, do they? They yeah. don't like that, <laughs> you know, I get it. Like I'm, I'm tough to keep up with and, right. and um, I, I'm very conscious about like not being obnoxious with my team. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, a lot of, a lot of people do business with us cause they know Dan or Steve and, mm -hmm. um, finding the ways for us to actually like add value to the relationship without, um, without being a bottleneck. Like I, right. I have a tendency. I knew if I jumped up, if I like was on every client call, I would be asking for things and taking on tasks and letting my team down. Mm. Um, just knowing bandwidth and follow through. And, um, so yeah, it's a, it's a tough balance uh, of kind of how and where to step in, but I love it. I got into this business cause I like search marketing. Um, not, yeah. you know, I, I think I led with that as opposed to like, I really want to own a marketing services firm. It just right. sort of like the rest of that stuff just sort of happened cause I was into search marketing. So yeah, I, I, I definitely get it. I think I'm having this 
experience now where it's like, am I still an SEO or am I a entrepreneur? Right. You know, I don't yeah. know. It's, the, the, answer, the answer can be both, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you got to wear a bunch of hats. Um, but I, I love diving into stuff. And it's all about finding the right ways for you to dive in and not getting stuck in the rabbit hole that you um, you can't focus on the other things that are really like value driver value drivers for the business. I get it. Um, you did something really interesting. You tried to determine the impact online of a TV campaign, which we yeah. don't really. We're like local businesses; they don't yeah. have big TV campaigns, but big brands. That's actually really interesting. You could help. Um, unsilo these different kinds of channels. What'd you find? Um, I put my foot in my mouth uh, at a client meeting probably like five or six years ago because um, we showed up with these awesome reports and we'd done some activities, but the numbers looked a hell of a lot better than would be explained by an ad copy test. Right. Um, and so we reported all these awesome results and we were waiting for the high five when they said we launched TV last week. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, these metrics were influenced by that TV buy, and it wasn't all our awesomeness, yeah, right? So you that, that tap was, dance a little bit. Yeah. yeah okay. So that was kind of like the the epiphany moment, and and of course, like none of these channels operate in a silo, and mm -hmm. you know, as as search folks, like we're the benefit of whether not just TV but display or online video or PR stunts, like all that stuff influences search. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I also want to be clear that I haven't solved it. No platform truly has. Right? There's a lot of ways that we can talk about attribution and, and like influence of what happens online as a result of offline media channels. So there, I mean, there's some great platforms out there that have algorithmic ways that they solve this, or at least like you know methodologies. Sure. And we have some brands that we've worked with that like that have access to those tools. I mean, hundreds of grand, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for some of them. So you have to be spending a whole lot in TV for that to for that to make sense. Yeah. Uh, but there's some obvious stuff in search, right? Like an increase in brand traffic I would think, yeah. on your website, increase in direct navigation. Um, and so you can identify some of these online acquisition channels that are more tied to demand, demand gen, uh, you know, other demand gen channels. Um, so, you know, we've we've um, it involves partnership. You talked about agency partnerships, yeah. right? We don't do any TV at BFO like that. I don't know that world. Um, so that caused us to integrate and, and talk to the TV agency and learn a whole lot more about what was happening in that channel. And, um, you know, I think as, as marketers and especially as agencies that get hired to do one thing, it's really, we just have to zoom out. And it's really easy to just get locked into our numbers and our reports. Um, and there's a couple of folks at BFO who have really taught me to um, Josh, you know Josh. I know. He does, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a great so he, guy, does, yeah. he does a ton of that, like zooming out, like what's happening in the world. You know, we we have a lot of travel and hospitality clients, and we can, as much as we can, like look at our numbers and try and correlate an increase in click through rate or the conversion rate change. Um, he'll go to weather.com and be like, oh, there were like blizzard prediction. There, you know, there's like something <laughs> happening in the world that affected what we're doing in our marketing channel. Yeah, that's uh, so valuable. Wow. It, it is, and it's really easy to forget to do that, uh, that oh. everything that happens in our world is affected by something else. You know, we all love taking credit for stuff, but <laughs> that's the, the reality of it is we're the beneficiary of what a lot of brands have done over, you know, over time. I had a very similar client meeting one time where the client was on Sister Wives. And I didn't even know that. And you saw is like- it, That's a show, I assume. A, okay. It's a show about like, <laughs> Sister, uh, okay, now I'm. Yeah, it's a reality TV show. show are they yeah. actually married to They're, siblings? No, it's like they are. Several women are married to the same guy. Oh, it's kind of okay. like a Mormon kind of. A, okay, that could be interesting. On. Yeah, the outtakes have to be really. They interesting. have to be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is really fun. Always fun to have a beer with Dan Golden. I recommend anybody do that. Um, BFO is just like one of the most generous and uh, nice agencies here in Chicago. And you mentioned Josh, like everyone from the whole team has been super, like way nicer to us than they needed to be. Um, what are you guys uh, promoting these days? What's going on at BFO? What are we going on? Yeah, you talked about LinkedIn stuff. Um, we are, uh, one of our challenges as an agency is we have clients in a bunch of different verticals. Um, okay. This year, we're very focused on B2B solutions. Um, and it's a lot of the same stuff we've always done, but um, it's about tying things together. So the the buzzword of account based marketing, a lot of people interpret that. It can mean yeah. a lot of different, you know, it can mean a lot of different things. Uh, but for us, it's about targeting the right people and connecting all these different channels. Um, so one of the challenges I've always had is like as marketers, we can drive traffic to a website and get people to fill out forms, uh, but we 
you know, there's a pass off to the brands where we can't control what happens next. Um, yeah. And so a platform like LinkedIn allows us to enable salespeople to actually follow up on the leads that showed up in HubSpot based on the traffic that we sent. So, you know, I, I guess like what's happening, connecting all these different ecosystems uh, and helping to get sales and marketing teams working together um, and building solution offerings around that. So not just most of what we've done historically has been focused on just servicing brands. What can we do to market this, you know, this brand? Uh, but in B2B and especially on LinkedIn, brands are humans. So um, building our offering to get both of those worlds working together, uh, it's like it's one of those one plus one equals three things that yeah. I'm, I'm very excited about. I love it. Well, Dan, thanks again for doing this. Uh, thanks to Burning Bush for having us. Like grand opening tomorrow. So we're like at a fresh brand new brewery here in North Center. The beers are tasty. I recommend it. Excellent. Cheers. Cheers. Let's do this again sometime, all right? I'm game. Thank right. you. Cheers. Cheers.